Hi all, let's look at another amazing game from the St. Louis Blitz event. Gary Kasparov playing against Sergei Karyakin, who of course contested against Magnus Carlsen for the World Chess Championship last time round. Kasparov played the most amazingly outrageous opening imaginable. E4 starts off sanely, you might think, but now the King's Gambit, but if that's not bad enough, after E takes F4, White's usual move here is knight f3. It protects against queen h4 check. But there is a bishop's gambit which gives the king f1. So that prepares against queen h4 check because then king f1. But the rarer move, knight c3, is played. Now this is called the Steinitz gambit. Steinitz had a very interesting career change style from being a mad hacker. Uh, to being a positional player later and of course the first world chess champion so Kasparov in a way playing paying a uh, tribute to the first world chess champion but in the early part of his career he said things like the king is a fighting piece uh, and this opening kind of demonstrates uh, that potentially after queen h4 check the king is actually forced to move here if g3 then f takes is really annoying if we attack the queen g2 check and black's totally winning queening taking that rook massive material advantage so this is why the king needs to move on move four yes now i have actually played this funny enough in an over the board game and lived to tell the tale uh there's also an immortal game which you should check out by a player called still which is on the channel so if you want to check out the Steinitz Gambit, there are some video titles on the channel. We see the move here, uh, which has is not in live book. The the main move seems to be d5. That's been played a few times, or d6, or queen coming back to e7, or c6. There's lots of different ideas, uh, but we see queen d8. So this is a novel move. Sometimes the queen's good actually to support d5 potentially. It's not that bad as you might think. But White's idea with this opening is to construct a nice center and shield the king later. So Kasparov is getting a nice center now. But after knight f6, there's a few snags uh, to deal with. It would be very uh, tempting to try and kick this knight with e5, but I'm not sure that actually does anything. In fact, Black might have knight h5 here. Yeah, with d6 to follow. This isn't so bad, this position for black at all. d6 is actually a strong threat. With the king there, you know, you can expect weird things about the position, weird properties about the position. So in fact, e5, yeah, it just, just seems uh, not doing too much. Uh, so we see actually... Uh, Bishop takes f4, but this does allow our bishop b4, and it looks as though this is annoying. This knight is actually annoying now. It's, uh, you know, hitting e4. It's actually pinned. Now, Karyakin damaged white's pawns and played d6. Uh, now we have knight f3, black castles. With the pressure on e4, Kasparov tries to reduce that. He actually gives up the bishop here. And now king f2. And it looks as though, for the moment, at move 11, Kasparov is doing fairly okay, actually. It's not such a bad position. There are some potential upsides. Uh, we see a very energetic idea to try and damage White's pawn structure. Undermine it h3 now to stop any nasty pin. Rook e8, that's protected. b6, trying to put more pressure on e4. Rook e1, bishop b7 g3 trying to connect the rooks and the bishop can go to g2 knight c6 bishop g2 rook a c8 now there might be a potential for cd and knight b4 here which is pretty deadly actually potentially so that stopped with a3 the knight goes to b8 rerouting rook e3 and it looked as though the intention was just to double rooks here now strangely uh I know this is just a blitz game. Strangely, Kasparov didn't play uh, this move. And it's not that bad uh, 
there, you know there's some interesting uh prospects for example here minus h4 we can go into f5 potentially at some point um so or bishop f3 with the idea knight f5 so that's not too bad but uh strangely uh rook f1 was played and actually unfortunately uh well queen e7 there's a lot of pressure unfortunately but it's still this is okay to support that pawn but it wasn't actually played in fact Sparf plays king g1 this looked like a little mistake either that or a very cunning pawn sacrifice it does go into a pin now yes that is pinned and it does mean actually the f5 square is something a knight can try and go to trying to make use of this pin so it's interesting complication and unexpected and maybe it was like partly psychological to try and get Kerryak in thinking uh, g6 that's bishops taken out and now queen g4 so it looks as though uh, there's some ideas here at least of knight f5 maybe and knight h6 maybe knight f6 though kicks the queen and it looks as though there was going to be a repetition here but actually Kerryak started playing for a win with knight g7 we have queen e2 c takes c takes although that's undoubling the pawns there might be some exploitable weaknesses here more easy to exploit now knight going back to g2 does make use of potentially a nice f4 square queen d6 c3 protecting d4 but that does lose the a3 pawn queen d2 protecting c3 96 and now g4 white has to go for it on the king's side knight g5 the thing is this looks very nasty black is forcibly winning the exchange there's very little white can do about knight f3 because Sparov just gives up an exchange g takes and sacks the exchange but he's got some attacking potential here which needs to be addressed we see rook f8 and now knight h4 queen e7 hitting the knight rook f2 check and our resourceful rook g3 knowing that queen takes is not entirely desirable because of rook takes winning the queen but even this position is okay uh, for black uh, but anyway check was played and rook takes c3 knight takes g6 white well, has to try for a perpetual check now this is uh, getting a bit scary for black's king even though he's the exchange up a very interesting position if rook c2 let's have a look knight f4 check um this is actually very good for black actually maybe he should have just carry up and should have just done this i think he got a bit panicky actually yeah i think rook c2 is a good move but also what was played is a good move just taking because of this uh check which wasn't played though <laughs> queen c6 check i think it's lights out after queen c6 check uh, this wasn't played though it's protecting uh that g6 so really if the king moves we can just play hg that would be uh lights out but in fact in severe time pressure queen d2 check was played and the problem is now there's always going to be a patch if, if takes you know there's a perpetual with queen h5 check sidestepping that h6 square and yeah just dancing like this so uh if black in time pressure can find a way of getting the queen back to c6 with check though but he didn't queen c2 check for example it's, it gets a little bit tricky actually because any queen c6 now we've got the discovered check of course winning uh <laughs> so it, it is a bit tricky now this is far different uh this position anyway even if we try to go back to c6 but uh queen e2 check was played and we have a lot of checks now Karen can trying to work out something clear perhaps but it's very very difficult in the time constraints it's at this moment the engines are screaming rookie eight is actually uh, a good try uh, to try and crash through uh, but you know who's gonna a human it's gonna be very difficult for a human to find this because the queen happens to be covering f7 so the rook might have an opportunity now even though that e line's
blocked to come to the C file. So, you know, technically this is, uh, it should be over for White with best play. But uh, this wasn't played. We have just repetition checks now. White bailing out. Uh, sorry, Black bailing out with the repetition checks. But, um, yeah, Kasparov got away with playing basically an outrageous opening. The Steinitz Gambit is very rarely seen today because it's not thought to be that great. The king is kind of exposed. There are some also very aggressive lines where black can play d5 and castle queenside later, uh, which is like one of my over the board games against Witzman on the channel if you want to check out. I'll put the relevant links in the description of this video if you want to check out some other Steinitz Gambit. Uh, videos it's something you might find entertaining to play in blitz chess as Kasparov did in this in this against one of the best players in the world and got a draw basically okay comments questions like shares appreciated thanks so much